Peace be with you all and welcome for another session of our catechism. We began with a prayer and in Surah, Shemit Baba, Brona, Ruha, Kutcha, Kaalaha, Amin. Baba and Dili Bishmeya, Baisham Kutcha Shemu, Athia Melkuthu, Hawa Ichbonu, Dardili Bishmeya, Hada Hawa Hambara. Alla Luchma, Simkan el Idio, Schwok Tala Nignahan Wuchtayathan, Dicht Hamachni Schwoklan Ta'an Adam to Adela Ellen. Lama Biritten el Juraba, Illam Khalistan Mimbisha, Msabab di Yuchila Melkuth, Hela Tishbacht el Alam Almin, Amin. Schlama el Lachmariam, Mlitha Name, Maran Immach. برخت بنش برخيل بيرت كاسق إيشا مات مريم يمد لها صالم بدالا أخني حطاي دهو بشيث دموتا آمين شو حتى بابا برونا وروحا قدشا من دهو الآبد أبدين آمين أوكي boys and girls I hope you had a good weekend and I hope this was a good week for you. I hope you're doing well in your schools. And hopefully um, all of you are looking forward to go back to schools. As I understand, a lot of schools are returning back to their schools. Today, um, we are going to be discussing Ba'utha, supplication. And we will learn where did this come from, where did it start, the origin of Ba'utha, and how is it that we celebrate this. As you also know, Ba'utha is not celebrated by all Christians, not even by all Catholics, because the tradition of Ba'utha has started before Jesus Christ. It has started somewhere in the um, few, few hundred years before Jesus. And if you go to the Bible, it started with the book of Jonah. The story of Jonah, as you all know, uh, Jonah is the one that was swallowed by, um, by a fish or a whale, um, because it had to be, it says a big fish, which had to be a whale, because only a whale can keep a person in their bellies for some time. And it became our tradition. As you know, the story of Jonah goes like, um, the Lord needed Jonah to deliver a message to the Ninevite. And Jonah refused. He did not want to do it. Now you're going to ask yourself, how is it that somebody can say no to God? Well, we all say no to God many times. But that's beside the point. Well, Jonah didn't want to go because Jonah is a Jew. And coming to Nineveh, to preach to the Ninevites, the Ninevites were the enemy. There was bad blood between the Assyrians who lived in that part of the world. And Nineveh is the north of Iraq. Today is basically the city of Mosul. So Jonah didn't want to go. So the Lord comes more than one time to him, asking him, and what does Jonah do? Well, Jonah tries to run away from God. Now, where can you run from God? Well, I don't know. Jonah tried. Especially when he saw that he could not win an argument with God. He tried to argue. Why should I go? These are the enemies. Maybe you should kill them all. Yeah, go ahead and kill them all. They've been bad. Might as well just kill them, right? Let them suffer. Who cares? They're my enemies. 
But you know that does not work with the Lord. The Lord is merciful. The Lord is forgiving. Uh, the Lord is good. The Lord is not going to do that. But, I mean, if he has to, if they're not going to repent, and if they're not going to be sorry for what they have done, oh yeah, he'll wipe them out of the face of the earth. He's done it before. When people do not repent. So what did Jonah does? Jonah runs and he goes to the city of Java, or Yaffa in, in Arabic as we say, which was a port city, which is in today's, today's his, well, geography is the city of Tel Aviv. So he goes there trying to catch a ship or a boat to go anywhere. Well, the boat that comes in is going to Tarshish, somewhere in the Mediterranean. I think it's probably close to Spain. And that's where Jonah's trying to go, to run away from God. As soon as he gets on that boat, he goes inside, he tries to go to sleep. And he really sleeps. As he's asleep, they've noticed that the ship is about to drown. So they get scared. And they try to calm the ship down. They, so they throw away all their baggage or their belongings, whatever they have, the cargo, to see maybe it's the weight. Well, it's not the weight. They start praying, each one of them, to their own God. Nothing is happening. Then they realize, oh, that, that new kid, the, the new person that just came in, where is he? We don't see him. They find him asleep. They wake him up. Wake up. The ship is about to drown. We don't know what's going on. We've never seen winds like, like those before. What, what's happening? He knows what's happening. So they ask him to go and pray to his God. Because he told them he was Jewish. So um, maybe his God will hear their prayer. And well, Jonah does not want to pray. Why would he pray? It's because of him this is happening. He knows that. And he's the one that's running away from God. So how could he bring himself to pray to God? So Jonah can't do it. And they're really afraid, those people on the ship. So Jonah tells them, well, you know what? There is only one solution. Throw me ashore. And whatever happened, happened. So they take him and they throw him into the water, into the sea. That's when he get swallowed up by the fish, by the big fish. And when he finds himself in that darkness, in the fish's belly, now he's scared. Now he's terrified. What, the, what happens now? Now he's going to turn to God and ask for God's mercy. And this is what Jonah says. Out of my distress, I called to the Lord. And he answered me. This is in the book of Jonah. From the womb of Sheol. I cried for help, and you heard my voice. You cast me into the deep, into the heart of the sea, and the flood enveloped me. All your breakers and your bellows passed over me. Then I said, I am banished from your sight. How will I again look upon your holy temple? Wow. He is really scared now. A 
it's like, how am I even going to go to church and look at you? I can't do it anymore. I won't be able to. And what happens? Well, the Lord is merciful. The Lord is forgiving. Like we said, the Lord is good. And the Lord forgives him. And then that fish or that whale spit him out to shore. And when he finds himself out, he gets up and he thanks God for sparing him. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Set out for the great city of Nineveh and announced to the message that I will tell you. So Jonah set out to Nineveh in accord with the word of the Lord. Now, Nineveh was an awesome, great city. It, looked, it took three days to walk through it. It was a big city. So Jonah goes to Nineveh, and he starts preaching. And guess what happened? The people listened. And they start praying. And they were sorry for all that they were doing, including their king. They all wore sackcloth, which is kind of like a dishdasha, a black dishdasha. And including the king, and he sat on, on ashes. This is resembling I am nothing but an ash. I came from ash and to ash I go. And that's what, what the Latin church, the Latin Catholic church do on uh, Ash Wednesday before Lent. When their Lent starts, they give you ashes and they make the sign of the cross and put it on your forehead to declare to the world, first I'm a Catholic, second Lent started, third, from ashes I came, to ashes I go. And they did that for three days. All the people, all their animals, their livestock, the babies, even the newborn. Nobody, 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 period, had anything go down their throat for those three days. And by the third day, they saw that they were still alive and God spared them. And they lived. They were good for a long time. But then again, they started getting bad. And guess, guess what? At the end, God did destroy Nineveh. And that was like a few hundred years later. But that is, that's a different story and that's a different message from God. So in, in the story of Jonah, there has been so many messages over here. First of all, um, the, the message was, go tell them within 40 days, I will turn your city upside down. 40 days. How many days did Jesus fasted before he was turned over to the government to be executed? 40 days. How long did Jonah stay in the belly of the fish? Three days. That was, that was kind of resembling the three days that Christ stayed in the crypt before he rose again. Before the resurrection. There's a lot of things in the story of Jonah that kind of go hand in hand of the days of Christ. When Jonah went into the um, the ship, he fell asleep. Well, what happened when they were at the Garden of Gethsemane when Jesus was praying? The three disciples that were with him, they went to sleep. 
Here he takes them with him to help him out and he's telling them I'm going to be turned over and I'm going to be crucified and I'm going to have a lot of pain and go through um, um, the passion. What do they do? They go to sleep. And that's what Jonah did. So there was a lot of correlations between Jesus and Jonah. And there, you will find that a lot in the Bible. When you read the Old Testament, a lot of that is so much just like in the days of Christ and what happened to Christ. So this is what happened and that's what it was for the Ba'utha. They did their Ba'utha, their supplication to the Lord. Now, after that, they were, they were spared and life went by. But then what happens is after Christ, when the people of Iraq were Christianized or became Christians at the hand of St. Thomas the Apostles, along with Mar Adde and Marmari, who were his helpers, or or they were his, they were Saint Thomas's disciples. We abandoned the idea of the Ba'utha because it doesn't serve us anymore. Now we're followers of Christ. At the time, um, the Ninevites were followers of um, some god that they had made up who was half man, half fish. And they had a big statue for that god, and that, that was their largest god, biggest god, um, and they worshipped that god. Now we're, the, now we're followers of a Christ, and we don't need to do all these things that we did before Christ. Until... The way I understand it, I think it was like sometime in the 6th century, like 500 and something AD after Christ, when there was a terrible plague that inflicted people and people were dying left and right. And people were living in misery because every house had somebody dear that died. And people were so upset and they were miserable and they didn't have anywhere to turn to. The doctors couldn't do nothing for them. There were no hospitals like we have now. And even if they were, they couldn't do nothing for them because there was no medicine for that plague. Just kind of sort of what's happening today. We're living these days today. You see how history repeats itself. So people went to the church and they went to the bishop and they were crying out, help us. What should we do? You tell us what to do. You're the church. And what's the bishop going to do? He's not a doctor. He doesn't have the medicine, but wait a minute, maybe he does. So the bishop sat down and he went through the Bible. Where is he going to find his answer? He's going to find it in the Bible, right? And he went through the Bible looking for something that he can give the people, a sign of hope. And what does he find? Jonah and the Ninevite. And he is a Ninevite. And Jonah came to them and saved them. And what did Jonah ask them to do? To fast. And they fasted for that three days. And the bishop said, okay, let us do the Ba'utha again. And they did their Ba'utha again. From all their heart, from all their mind, all their soul. They poured their heart out to God. And God listened, and God helped, 
and God had pity on them. And that is how that plague went away. It stopped. And they were not dying anymore from that plague. So, um, and then, and I think they also abandoned that idea of the Ba'utha again after years. And then some other things happened and they went back to the Ba'utha. So it kind of became the Ninevite symbol of hope. Whenever there was a hopeless situation that we were faced with, what saved us? The Ba'utha. And we do our Ba'utha. And now, for modern day history, we're beginning, we've been doing the Ba'utha. Um, ever since I was old enough to understand, I know we've been doing the Ba'utha. I didn't understand what it was before, and I had no idea it had anything to do, to do with Jonah or anything. I just knew it's a Ba'utha and we have to do it. And it's a, it's a fast, it's a Soma that we do for three, three days. But now I know what it is and where it came from and the history of it. And it's a beautiful thing that we do. And I know there are other cultures that have adapted this idea. And they do the same thing. Not necessarily the same time that we start, but they do it. Uh, they have set a time aside for it and they do their Ba'utha just like how we did. And how we're doing now. Now going back to Jonah. As I was reading this and I was preparing for this. And I was thinking in the beginning. What a terrible person Jonah is. He says no to God. And he tried to run away from, from God. He must be. He, he kind of looks like a bad prophet. But then again, it hit me as he came in and gave the message. And I know in the Bible somewhere it says that um, a messenger is never heard of or a prophet is never believed in, in his hometown or among his people. And all the prophets that I know, when they came in and they were giving out their message, they were proclaiming their message to the people, people were getting mad at them and people were getting tired of them and people were kicking them and, and uh, sending them away and not paying attention to them. But then what happened with Jonah? They listened right away. Right away, they listened to him, even though he was their enemy. And they repented. So, I mean, Jonah, in a way, he's a worse prophet because he tells no to God. But then he repents and does what, the, what God tells him. But then the people that he's giving the message to, they listen to him right away. I don't know how he felt about it. Was he rejoiced that people listened to him? He must be. I mean, I would have been if I told people to do something and they listened to me and they did it. So, I mean, this is how it went with Jonah. But then Jonah was also mad at God when this is what I found out you know when you read the book of Jonah which is not that long I think it's about I think it's only like four chapters so you can go into your Bibles and you can read read it all to yourself it is really a very nice story 
Jonah was angry. He was angry at God. It's like, how dare God save my enemy? They really repented. I mean, he thought when he goes in and give them the message, they're not going to listen and God was going to destroy them. But that's not what happened. They listened. They listened. So not only did he go to preach to the enemy, the enemy listened to him. And that's not what he, what he wanted to happen. He did not want them to listen to him. And when they listened and repented and God forgave them, Jonah had a hard time with this because he couldn't understand how is it that we can be we can do so much wrong against God and then God forgive us and wipe out our slate clean It was hard for Jonah to, to see that happen. And I think many of us, well, all of us, not just many of us, all of us kind of do that. See, God wants each and every one of us to get out and proclaim his message to others. We don't all have to go out and start preaching and knocking on doors. Each one of us can do it on their own way. You can do it by being a good person, by forgiving others, by showing others how we can do God's work. Not getting mad at people. When teachers ask you to do your homework, you do it. When your mom asks you to do something, you do it. Um, and you do it happily. Yes, mother, I would like to do that for you. Yes, father, I will do it. And when teachers ask you to do your homework, do your homework and turn it in. So um, this is basically the story of Jonah and our Baotha. And When this starts on Monday, I know there are um, several masses every day for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. There are masses in the morning and there, and there are masses in the evening. I know for St. George Church, there is in Chaldean, there is in Arabic, there is in, um, in English. And they will also do the supplication of Ba'utha. If you can catch one of these days, especially in English, it is very, very powerful prayers, beautiful prayers. If you can just listen to the words, you will be amazed. So I wish you all, um, a very good Ba'utha. And may God hear your prayers, you and your families. And, and please, whatever you do, do it from all your heart. You don't even have to give up things for Ba'utha. Not if you don't want to. It's nice to do it, but you don't have to. And instead of giving up things, 
I'm not going to eat this. I'm not going to drink this. And instead of doing that, how about just read the Bible? Pray. Maybe not pray more for those of you who already pray, but pay attention to what you say when you're praying. Pray a little bit more from your heart. Close your eyes as you're praying. And forget what's going around you. Listen to yourself, what you're saying when you're praying. I wish you all a great Bawitha. I wish you the best. Have a great week. God bless you. And hope to see some of you in church all these three days. Or at least one of these three days, whatever you can, you can do. You don't have to, but it's nice to, to do that. If you can ask your families to bring you, it is really nice. Thank you and God bless you. Peace be with you.